debate was about trends. Proposition had to prove a trend of success, that these rights were meaningfully given to states when they succeeded, and that these states viably exist. We believe they failed to prove that trend. I'm going to take a walk to the world of proposition. And I'm going to ask you for a moment to pretend. Pretend for a moment that you are a state and that you want to succeed under what proposition suggests. Let's say you have succeeded. And then suddenly you realize, wait a minute, we don't control our water, we barely have a defense policy, we don't control our trade routes. What are we going to do now? On that point, Alan tried to say, well, such a state wouldn't be allowed to secede anyway. So what happened to the, to the right to secede? What happened to the all-important, all-dominating cultural identity? What did they say about it? They said, this right is so important that we need to give you four practical criteria before you can ever have it. That's a very odd sort of fundamental right, isn't it? <laughs> Another strange thing about their world, they told us, the lines that we draw between nations are always lines of respect. We said, no, respect is necessarily a mutual thing. If the larger nation doesn't respect that line, then you're in a bit of trouble. So imagine for a moment that you are living in that succeeded state. It's not going to be a very good place to live in, ladies and gentlemen. They tried to tell us that, you know what, the UN can protect us. We said, no, it can't. Look what happened in Trebinita and Rwanda. They said, oh, well, look at the US. We said, well, look at President Obama. He doesn't want to do much. Then they said, well, there are other countries who can do this. And again, we systemically proved, no, these countries cannot. Or we point out even more insidious effects in the policy. We say, okay, what happens even before the nation secedes? What happens when you express this desire to secede? We said the oppression that you so condemn is going to get a lot worse. And we proved this with a massive trend of logic and examples. We, in fact, demonstrated that each of these instances of oppression only came about after a secessionist movement arose. So the entire cavalier reply that, well, they're going to oppress them anyway simply didn't stand. It's wrong to say just because they have problems we will let them suffer more by taking on this policy. Team Singapore simply does not stand for that. It is also wrong that they came up to try and tell us, well, this creates a level playing field. We said, well, if the bet succeeds for China, China is bigger and stronger and much more economically viable. That's not a level playing field in any sense of the word, and we asked them to prove that this level playing field exists. So they decided to talk about South Sudan. We said, well, there are massive problems there. So they retreated again. They decided to talk about Scotland. And as much as we love Scotland and think this competition has been brilliant, we just don't think Scotland is going to be very viable in any sense of the word, even if it does happen to succeed. And Brinty gave you lots of analysis in this third picture to take down that one last example of success they wanted to talk about. So the proposition towards this very strange source of work. Then they moved on to that in the last speaker to the crucial aspect of the what they want to make all important. The idea of there being a regional identity and this necessity for the right. Firstly, as I've said, it was a rather odd sort of right because there were so many criteria they attached to it. But we told you, wait a minute, aren't there more important things than this anyway? Like the need to have, feel safe, not your right to life. That's why we said that, that, that an independent state is merely a means to an end. Because as they conceded, there's so many things which must come before to allow the state to work, that the state is in fact an instrument to these very ends themselves. That was analysis they never took down. What then? Our world. our world is a realistic world. We said people can have aspirations to independence and that they can have dreams. But dreams are rooted in reality. And to spill the blood of innocent people doesn't bring you any closer to these dreams in the very first place. And in any case, we could give them viable alternatives. We thought would result in a lot less harm. We talked about devolution, for instance. And we said, well, even if there isn't devolution, even if we did absolutely nothing at all, the world of Team Island would be a very very scary for all to live in. I beg you to go through the same thing.